either God didn't know his tent and used the wrong wording, and the word of God was in error, and it said, should have said, but he would come and be wounded for our transgression. Then he was. We know it didn't happen when, before Isaiah got here. Do, do, do we know? He was. Past tense. Either God's word is error, which we know that it is not, or it happened prior to when we saw it happen 2,000 years ago, when it was actually fulfilled in time. God has a plan, and he worked his plan, and everything, everything, everything that you ever need has already been provided by God. He don't have to provide nothing else for you, because he's already done it. So when you get to that time of your life where you have a great need, you can rest. Because it's already provided. You may not see the manifestation of it immediately. You may have to, that don't mean we sit back and do nothing, but we can rest. No, but look, how do you think Paul and these apostles we can hold up in such high esteem did what they did and accomplished what they accomplished? How do you think they did that? Without knowing that God had already taken care of their situation. So whether they live or whether they die, it's going to be okay. Because God had already provided for them for that moment. He provided enough grace. And he, he said, my grace is sufficient for you, Paul. You don't have to have that thing removed. My grace is sufficient. It's, he's already given you the grace. He's already given you the financial breakthrough. He's already healed your body. He's done it already. All you've got to do is receive it and rest in it. And walk it out. And believe his word. Either we're saying what Isaiah wrote was inerrant because it hadn't happened, because it hadn't manifested in time. See, what God did in eternity past is manifested in time. You and I are manifested in time because God had a plan for you and for me from eternity before he created it all. He knew. So, how does it apply? We already talked about it, how Father Ronnie met them. Or went and talked with him, and how we all connected as a church body, and how they're a part of this now, and, and God's doing great things, you know, and up to something. I don't know it all, but I do know that this just happened. See, it, it amazed me. Some of you he met because he come here, but yesterday there was people that he had never met come out from Goldsboro to help him move. God had already provided. They could have had other plans. They could have been, whatever they could have been going on, they could have had. They couldn't have come. But they, they didn't have anything where they could come and not where they couldn't come at all. They could come for part of the day. But that part of the day got a lot accomplished, I think, for them. So everything is okay. Now, it don't mean everything's great. I mean, she's lost her mom. She's been recuperating from her surgery. You know, they got a lot of mess. They got to put up and clean up and straighten up in their new house. But at least... God has met their needs so far. You think he's going to quit now? Do you think he's going to quit meeting your need? Do you think he's going to quit meeting my need? Do you think he's going to quit meeting the church's need? I don't know how he's going to do it. No matter. I can rest with him. When we say we're taking out too much, then what we got coming in? I don't mean to go out and blow it because we know he's going to be the need. I'm not talking about that kind of stuff. But we can trust God has already got a plan and got the provision for what we need when we need it. And he'll bring it how he needs to bring it. And he's not, he's not, you know, he can bring a man. And just one day, there's some money. I've seen people, well, we prayed for a church at a church one time from a financial breakthrough, and guess what happened?